It's not often that you look out of your kitchen window and see something completely unexpected. But sometimes our gardens can hide undiscovered aliens. And here they are. Well, I know what you're thinking, but honestly, this hedge is full of them. And the reason you can't see them is they're masters of camouflage. They are stick insects. But what is an animal normally found in foreign forests doing in the Devonshire garden of one show viewer, Linda Kingston? So when did you first realise you had these alien creatures in your hedge? <laughs> well, it was about 2009, and I think it was around about February. And I was just walking out of the kitchen door, up past the hedge to the dustbin. <laughs> and I looked in the hedge and I thought, hang on, that's a stick insect. When you saw them first, were you alarmed at all? No, I was amazed. I wasn't alarmed. Just excited, really, and pleased to have them. These are called prickly stick insects for obvious reasons, and they're originally from New Zealand. How do you think they got into your hedge? That I don't know. I mean, I bought the hedge quite a few years ago and didn't find any stick insects for about five years, so I don't know how they suddenly appeared on this hedge. So how did they really get here? You might think they're just escaped pets, but actually there's a little more to it than that. Turn the clock back to 1890. Enterprising men from Devon and Cornwall were venturing forth into unknown territories. On reaching New Zealand, they found that the climate was similar to back home and began bringing back weird and wonderful plants to adorn the gardens of the British aristocracy. Particularly popular were these tree ferns. But hidden on the plants were tiny stick insect eggs. Once hatched, the stick insects had to deploy an arsenal of tricks in order to survive in the UK. Firstly, they were able to eat several kinds of plants, even tough evergreen bushes. Secondly, they have amazing camouflage. Their prickly skin helps them blend in with the branches. And, if you thought these adults were well hidden, the babies are even harder to spot. Oh, oh, I see one. I can see it. I can see one. Ah, really? Yes. Ah, well, I'm pleased you've seen one on the head. It is hard to see. Look at that. As well as looking green and stick-like, they wobble, imitating leaves blowing in the wind. It must work well, as so far no birds in the UK seem to eat them. So they have all these tricks. They can freeze, they can sway. Yeah. But the really interesting thing isn't any of this. What's that? Ah. You asked me earlier whether this was a male or a female, and mm. I said immediately, it's a female. Mm. And that's because they're all females. There are no males. These insects have real girl power. They're able to lay eggs without the need to mate. Every egg hatches out into a tiny clone of her mother. That's actually that's quite amazing. a good trick if you're going to invade anywhere. You don't want to have, the, have to have the hassle of having males as well. <laughs> so with no need for males, the first stick insect egg that hatched in the UK had everything she needed for a takeover. Each female can lay over 300 eggs, and over the space of a summer, they can grow from an almost invisible thread to a whopper like this. So if they're so good at surviving and reproducing, how come we're not knee-deep in stick insects? Well, there are one or two things that keep them in check. Almost all of the UK stick insects are here in the warmer southwest, because further north, it's too cold in winter. And the other reason? Well, these girls are not built for travel. They can't fly, and they don't really like walking either. Just like the original pioneers, if our stick insects want to find a new home, their only option is to hitch a lift on a plant. <laughs> 